mortgagemother.com before they open for March 5th, 2018. Let's take a look at markets here. We're looking at pre-market action with about four minutes to go before the close. And what I want to do in this video here is I'm going to record the opening of today's session. And then I'm also going to take a look at recording the close of the session. So I'm going to come back in about six and a half hours and finish this video. And the reason why I want to do that is we have an opportunity here once again to understand the idea or the understanding, the phenomena, the explanation, the mathematical reason why when an instrument is moving below 50, we tend to have let's say a big move relative to recent action so we can see we closed last friday with the nasdaq trading at 53 52.42 on the on the daily rsi so depending on whether we crack back below the 50 level if we trade below the 50 level we might have let's say a 1% plus down day. Now we had a 1% up day on Friday as we moved above RSI 50. So normally what happens is that when you move above 50, you tend to close around the highs of the day, which happened on Friday. That was the close relative to the high. It was close to the highs of the day, had a 1% up day. And so let's record this session at the open and then we'll see what's going to happen by the close. We're going to see whether we are going to close at the lows of the day. And if the market or the Dow, excuse me, the NASDAQ, NASDAQ is going to be down more than 1% plus, 1% plus, and if it is able to hold back above RSI 50. So let's say an instrument tries to drop below 50 but fails to and stays above 50. In other words, it refuses to drop below this RSI 50 level. That's bullish. At the same time, an instrument that looks like it is going above 50 fails to close above 50 on the RSI. That tends to be bearish because it was unable to recapture the bullish sector or the bullish part of the RSI. It's a lot of words I just used there, but generally speaking is failure to drop below 50 is bullish. Failure to go above 50 when you're trying to tends to be a sign of weakness. So we're going to record the open of this session and then we are also going to record the close in a couple of hours. All right, here we are just about to open for the day, about five seconds. There we go. All right, so that's the open. I'm going to record this for a couple more seconds and then I'll stop the recording and be back at the close. Uh, before we do that, let's take a look and see at the open how the NASDAQ is responding to that early morning move. So we are still above 50. So if the NASDAQ can defend 50 and not break below 50, by the end of the close, the market is not going to be down as much. That's why I was saying failure to drop below 50 is a good sign, showing that the market has resiliency and wants to hold current levels. And if we break below 50, then that's when we're going to see that sizable drop. So this is how we are opening up. It's been about 30 seconds, about a minute actually after the open. Let's take a look at, oh, we'll go here. All right. So that's how market is shaping up, how the market is responding at the open. I'll be back at the close. All right, so we are coming to the close of the session here. We have about five minutes. Before I show you the market, let me show you what the NASDAQ was looking like in the morning. You can see the NASDAQ was very close to RSI 50 at the open. 
And so we knew that if the market was to drop below 50, to expect a big down day. And we also knew that if the market was to defend 50 as far as the NASDAQ was concerned, then that would be a bullish sign. So let's at least be clear about that. Below 50, bearish down day, holding above 50, after threatening to drop below it, holding above 50 is a bullish sign. All right, so that's pretty much sets the stage. I want to show you now, this is almost six and a half hours. We're going to take a look now at what the market is doing. And we have about, let's say, three, three minutes or so. As you can see there, and we are clearly up 1%. So the NASDAQ failed to drop below 50, and we are seeing a bullish day. Now, let me do my best to explain where the bullish day comes from with the same look, or at least viewing this from the RSI 50 perspective. To understand this, we have to go take a look at the S&P 500. This is where the S&P 500 closed during Friday's session, today being a Monday. We closed below 50. The RSI was just, let's call it about 46 or 45 and a half. And so that was Friday's close. And keeping with our theme here about RSI 50, we can see right now the market is having a good session, about 1%, because the S&P 500 is moving above 50 which might explain, and let me refresh this, might explain why we are holding on to the gains of the day and closing towards the, the highs of the day. This is a characteristic of a market moving above RSI 50. So while I talk here, let's see how the markets are going to close. More than likely, we are going to see the S&P 500 confirm the close as being one where the market was moving above RSI 50 and that is because moving above 50 on the daily RSI tends to suggest a strong update. So let's see here that's the bell. So we can see the market settling out here. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 see what the RSI did at the close. So let's update this chart. And we can see that we are closing just a tad below 50. So which means, again, two things. We might get a continuation of this strong move tomorrow. If now it can move. Now remember, it just closed below 50. So two things could be taking place here. It could be that the market is coming back and might have now another chance tomorrow to move above 50 which might be good for another strong update or the market shows that it has failed to move above RSI 50 on the daily for the S&P 500 which is setting up the stage for a reversal now if we take a look at the hourly one thing that I was watching throughout the day is this line here on the hourly it could be that the market is going to have to respond to this now that the S&P 500 has failed to move above 50 when it had a chance to do so. You can see that at the highs of the day and the close, we seem to be respecting this line. So, if this is confirmed as resistance, if we drop below RSI 50 on the hourly, expect a big hour to the downside because this is where we closed. And now we marry that with the daily for the S&P 500. And we can see that if the daily chart is unsuccessful in moving, or actually was unsuccessful in moving above 50, this sets the stage for a reversal. Failure to move above 50 when you had a chance. Resistance on the hourly might set the stage for a pullback. Now, of course, we'll see what happened in the next couple of days as we dig in and try to understand how the dynamics play out. 
But here, S&P 500 did close below 50. Let me update this one more time. And let me show you what the closing prices are for the market. All right. And we can see that we failed to close above 50 for the SPX, which is, again, two scenarios. Now we have another chance to move above 50, which would be a bullish scenario. Or now we see that the market is showing that it failed to, to move above 50 because it doesn't have the strength or the intent and that the next meaningful direction is lower because of failure to move above 50. Based on the hourly, it would make sense that the next meaningful trend direction might be for the market to stall around here due to failure to hold the RSI 50. And just so that we can have the other major averages, this is how the NASDAQ ended the day at about 56, 55 and change. And take a look at the Dow, which is at 47. So the Dow slightly below 50, NASDAQ slightly above 50, S&P 500 just under 50, which sets the stage for a volatile time because the NASDAQ can drop below 50 or the Dow can move above 50, which is going to create a tug of war. And understanding this generally sets the stage and you can decide based on the energies which way to set yourself up for a swing trade. Now what I might have to do is make a follow-up video to this video after we've seen the data of what the market decides to do because all of it is going to pretty much sync synchronize with all I'm discussing here. So I might have to do a follow-up video but this video pretty much is trying to explain why we have that movement in big chunks when the RSI is in play, especially when the RSI is trading around the RSI 50. Eric Mwadith, Mwadith.com. Expect a follow-up video. As always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E A C S. Woo! As we come to the close of the second day, we can see this is now for March 6, 2018. Just want to show you what the market has done here. What I decided to do was to keep the video running instead of recording it in sessions i was just going to combine all the video in one simple straight shot and we can see that here we are having a stalemate as far as the daily action is concerned and i'll take a look at the charts here after we see the close so let's wait for the close here and we can see pretty much what looks like uh guess sideways to down market no I, let's call it sideways for the most of the day we've been sideways which makes a lot of sense given that we're in a fight between markets wanting to go go up as far as the s p 500 is concerned all right so that's the close let's take a look at the charts we've been looking at the last two days and we can see here S&P 500. Let me refresh this chart. So we are closing just a tad above that RSI 50 level. We take a look at the hourly. And we can see that we continue to struggle on the hourly based on this line here. Which is the line we had drawn previously. So this has been two days of resistance on this line, which means that until we clear this level here, it is looking like now that we have both the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq trading above 50 on the daily. So let's take a look. This is now the S&P 500 daily. We can see that the daily for the S&P 500 at about 51 the nasdaq trading at about 58 and we can see that the dow daily is trading just let's call it at about 47. now remember this video we are only looking at the rsi 50 phenomena so this is going to play out in terms of the next major swing trade 
and for example if you take a look at the Dow it still looks like on the hourly we are still looking at a market that is showing short-term resistance on the hourly in fact the Dow has not hit that line yet looks like the Dow is struggling on the hourly as it tries to hold above 50 so let's take a look at the Nasdaq here on the hourly and the Nasdaq on the hourly we can see that this is an ongoing theme in the market you take that break and then draw our uniformity resistance line it's clear to see that the market has failed here on the hourly and now we are still showing potential resistance so let's take a look at this one final time so it looks like if we end up showing confirmed resistance and we coil down then it means that the daily for the S&P 500 to begin with is gonna drop below 50 so if the resistance is correct then we can see that the S&P 500 is gonna drop below 50 we're gonna see more than likely S&P 500 have a, an expanded move lower which might trigger the Nasdaq to also have an attempt to break below 50 which would be for a big gain so the way I would look at this current situation if you combine the hourly and you combine the daily I would set myself up for a potential pullback based on RSI 50 crossing of the S&P 500 Eric Mwadithmwadi.com as always good luck peace and blessings E I C S. Mwah. Eric Mwadith, mother .com. Now we are continuing on with this series here and we can see that this is now next day. And before I show you the live trading, let's do a, re a quick recap. This is for March 7th. We have about 7 minutes before the market opens. Alright, so let's go back to the charts. And we can see that the NASDAQ closed with its daily RSI at about 58.57 let's take a look at where the S&P 500 closed yesterday S&P 500 closed at about 50 51 about 51 and so I was saying that this can be a trap for a major not a major but an expanded move lower based on the hourly charts if we take a look at the take a look at the Dow you can see the Dow has failed to reclaim the level above RSI 50 which is a sign of a market that is not as strong if we take a look at the hourly chart for the Dow we talked about this idea that the Dow looks like it is coming back to test this break Of those highs and we can draw a line which happens to be just above the RSI 50 level so RSI 50 rejection on the hourly for the Dow and as long as that is the case we can position ourselves lower was the conclusion from yesterday's market action we take a look at the S&P 500 on the hourly and also we can see here it was coming back to test the recent break and as of yesterday this was still showing confirmation of resistance and I was making the point that that means that the best thing to do is to set yourself up for a move lower for those who trade in the small time frame also to be aware that if we get an 
hourly drop below 50 because we ended the day yesterday with the RSI above 50. The conclusion was that if we drop below 50, expect a big down hour, which might lead to a big down day. And for the NASDAQ, pretty much similar type analysis on the hourly. This is where the NASDAQ is struggling over the last day or so. And the conclusion from this was, if this is still resistance, then we can expect the market to pull back and have a big down hour as it moves below RSI 50 on the hourly. And if the bulls want to move the market higher, they would have to clear the red line. All right. So that was yesterday's close. And we open the morning now. So this is what I woke up to this morning. The market is down about 240 points on the Dow. This is how markets are trading worldwide. More importantly, we see that the down hour, the sharp down hour that the hourly charts were predicting can now be seen because remember the NASDAQ Let's take a look at the Nasdaq on the hourly it was trading just above this RSI 50 level we take a look and the S&P 500 was also trading above the RSI 50 level on the hourly which means that there was a chance to get a big hourly drop it looks like at the open we are gonna get exactly the conditions that the charts were predicting and now we can take a look at the live trading with about two minutes to go before the market open. This is how market is set to open. So by understanding only the RSI and where the market was trading in relationship to the RSI 50 level, remember this video series, which I have combined into one of our seri a series of days is pretty much looking at the RSI 50 level only, pretty much. And by understanding the dynamics of what happens when the RSI is around 50, we can understand where the market might see the next big move. So what I'm going to do is pause this, come back at the open, and potentially also record the close in a couple of hours. So I'll be back here in a minute to see the, how the market opens up take a look at the charts one more time and then I'll pause the video and I'll conclude the video at the end of the day so we can see how things are gonna play out all right we are getting close to the open here about 10 seconds and we're gonna take a look at the charts one more time and then I'll come back at the close so here we go All right, so the day is up and running. Now this these are futures our futures trading. I'm gonna switch here to live trading for the major indices. So there you have it. Let's take a look at those charts. I'm gonna update this. So this was the close of yesterday, May sixth. Do an update there. All right. So we can see at the open here, S&P 500, which was close to RSI 50, is now dropping below 50 on the hourly, which is what the charts were indicating that the potentials were looking. Remember, these are just potentials. There is no certainty because the market could have equally decided to break out. So let's keep that in mind. Yes, we have our own opinion of what the market was going to do, or at least an indication, but there's no certainty. The market can always change what you think will, for example, there was nothing stopping the market from gapping up above the red line, correct? Yes. So 
We can also say that just because the market went in the direction we thought was possible is just trying to understand the odds, but there is no certainty. At any rate, in this particular example, we've seen that we've dropped below 50 for the hour, which means at the end of this hour, the market is going to pretty much be around current levels or lower. If we take a look at the S&P 500 daily, we can see the S&P 500 is now back below RSI 50, which explains this drop. And remember, I'm going to come back at the close of the session because generally speaking, whenever a market is moving below 50 on the daily, we tend to have a big reaction lower into the close. So we'll, we'll see how things are going to play out. Right now, the market is coming off the lows of the day at the, at the gap down open. But remember, as long as S&P 500 is cracking below 50, there is a chance that by the close, we might still have a good size down day. And at the same time, if the S&P 500 can hold, now this is important, if the S&P 500 can hold above RSI 50, in other words, if it can close back above RSI 50, that would be very bullish. In other words, failure to crack below 50 is a sign of a market that wants to go higher. So right now, yes, it is below 50. But we keep watching this because if by the end of the day, it is trading above 50, so 50 plus, then that would be a sign of a strong market. But remember, generally, when you see the market dropping below 50, it means higher chances of a big down day into the close. Into the close. Now, if we take a look at the NASDAQ, on the daily, you can see the NASDAQ is not below 50. It is trading at 55. Which means it's not out of the realm of possibility that the NASDAQ might start inching closer to 50. And the worst case scenario for short term bulls is that the NASDAQ drops all the way below 50 because that's going to be for a big down day, maybe 1% or 2% plus on the downside. So the NASDAQ here, the more it closes and moves, the more it moves closer to RSI 50, the more we might be looking at a potential big down day. And we can see on the hourly for the NASDAQ confirming the resistance line. The NASDAQ has yet to drop below 50 on the hourly, which is right now good for bulls. But we also watch this because if it cracks below 50 on the hourly, we might see a big down hour. So all these things are going to play out. And the best thing for me to do for both you and I, while we study this couple of days, as the markets are trading around RSI 50 on the hourly and daily, the best thing to do is for me to come back at the close and we can see how the market is going to respond. As long as S&P 500 is dropping below 50, expect this down day to stick. I'll be back at the close. So fast forward, we are looking now towards the end of the day. At some point, the Dow was down about, let's call it about 350 points, but it's come back over the last couple of hours before the close here. So it looks like a decent recovery of the lows. So the only thing we got was the hourly move below RSI 50. So with about a couple of minutes to go, it's how markets are shaping up. Let's take a look at those charts. All right, so go back to the charts. We got that hourly move lower. Market was trading lower midday, but with the S&P 500, we can see that we've come back. Now we are trading back above 50, which means that this could very easily be where the market makes a stand. Having been below 50, managed to recover above 50, this is actually a good sign for market bulls. If you take a look at the Dow, you can see the Dow still having a down day, but not the worst. 
if you take a look at the S&P 500, excuse me, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ continues to hold above RSI 50. So net-net, even though it's a down day, the market's been down for the most part for the day, because the S&P 500 defended RSI 50, this is net-net good for bulls. Now let me show you what's interesting here, is if you go take a look at the hourly charts, even as the market comes off the lows, we are still showing that the market is coming back to the same RSI level. So this could play out over a series of days. So, put another way, the only thing we got this morning was this move below 50 on the hourly for this drop, but that's it. The market did recover after that. We came back above 50 intraday on the hourly, which is why we have this last couple of hours to the upside. Now, in other words, if we take a look also at the Dow, the Dow is coming back to test the same level here. So what the bulls need to do is confirm strength by moving above this blue line, excuse me, the red line, or moving the RSI above 50. Take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is still coming back to this potential resistance level here. So if the market is to do well, the NASDAQ has to move above this level. Otherwise, it could be that the market is taking the long path because if we end up showing resistance on this line, then we are still looking at a market that has the potential of pulling back. And the reason why is net-net of the three major averages, the S&P 500 remains slightly above 50. So, yes, intraday, good recovery. But now the question becomes if the hourly is going to continue rejecting the market. And if it's still rejecting the market on the hourly for the NASDAQ, in other words, if this continues being resistance on the hourly, then we are still going to get the S&P 500 staging a big move to the downside as it moves its RSI below 50. So here we are at the close. There is your bell. And this is how the market is looking to close. So we are closing here down for the day. But the market has really come off the low. So I think we can say that the bulls made a stand. And one final look at the hourly chart here. We can see, let's go to the hourly chart for the S&P 500. And I'm going to zoom in here. Take a look at a one month view from the hourly point. Of point. Let's go. All right. Just bear with me. We can see here now a one month view of the hourly chart. In the morning, we dropped below 50, which is when we had this big candle lower. In the afternoon, we recovered back above 50, which is part of this two hour move to the upside. And yet, we ended the day at the same level where we've been finding resistance. So, depending on whether we can break out above that level, that would give us the next meaningful direction, or are we going to show resistance here still, and once we show resistance, another hourly drop might still bring the S&P 500 to dropping below 50, which might be the reason for a big down day. Now, one final thing here, we can see the Nasdaq closing at 58 and change on its, on its daily. Compare that with the Dow, which closed at 46. So they are ways off from the RSI 50 level. Keep in mind, this video is basically looking at the RSI 50 crossing only. So that's why I, I keep going back to that observation. S&P 500, as of the close yesterday, I mean, as of the close today, just now, S&P 500 closed at about 50.55.
So net net, if there is gonna be a big move, it might begin with the S&P 500 potentially dropping below 50, which might still set the stage for a big pullback on an on a day-to-day -day basis. So I would still, based on the hourly res resistance, hourly ch hourly chart resistance, and also based on the fact that S&P 500 is closest to the RSI 50 level. So if I was to make a bet, I would bet that the next potential swing trade, as long as the hourly is showing resistance, the next potential resistance for the market or the next potential swing trade for those who trade intraday is for the market to move lower. So I'll continue the video and we'll see how this is going to play out over the next couple of day or session. I'll stop for now and continue as we go on with this series. And the close for the day. So this is a close for March 7th, 2018. Right there. All right, I'll see you in the next edition. Eric Mwadith, mother .com. So we are continuing here with the next day's action. Now we are trading into March 8th, 2018 in this ongoing series. And you can see in the pre-market, the market is called to open higher by about 100 points on the Dow. Now based on yesterday's close, let's take a look at the charts here. And what we can see, S&P 500 closed above 50. Remember yesterday it was trading below 50 for most of the day but it recovered back above 50 which is a sign of strength in itself. Now we also concluded yesterday at the close that based on where the RSI on the hourly is trading we are looking at markets that are still having to contend with this resistance level and this is true for both S&P 500 I mean for all the S&P 500 Nasdaq and the Dow major averages so this is the line right here if the market can clear this line then we can expect higher prices now if this line ends up being resistance given where the S&P 500 closed just above 50 chances are we are still looking at a market that might see resistance movement below RSI 50 on the hourly which might lead to a big hourly drop which might be to a lead to a big daily close so I'm gonna record the open and then I'm gonna come back after the close because I'm not gonna be able to capture the close I'm gonna be uh, running some errands at the time uh, have some appointments around that time at the close so I'm gonna record the open and then we'll come back and take a look at how the market closed for the day but this is how we're shaping up to open let's take a look at the Dow you can see here it closed at 46 let's take a look at the Nasdaq and we can see so there's the open the Nasdaq closed at 58 as of yesterday so let's take a look at how we're gonna be trading here in the first couple of minutes and then I'll pause the video and come back and finish this video after the close of today's session so let's just take a look here and recall those hourly charts are gonna come in play the more we are not able to move above that line the more even though the market is moving higher the more I would say that if the hourly charts continue showing resistance and let's take a look at those hourly charts see how they look right now let's go to the Nasdaq hourly all right let's see whether it's gonna load and we can see here I don't think this reflects the current let me update this chart all right so we are showing the move higher at the open and there's a gap up you show that here 
that's a gap up for the morning now notice where the RSI is trading still within potential resistance here now keep in mind we are also coming close to the 61.8 level in other words just because the market opened higher does not necessarily mean that it has to stay there the hourly charts are gonna determine this take a look at the Dow the Dow is still coming back to test the RSI 50 level and also this line here is gonna either be a breakout line or a resistance line we shall see by the end of the day how this is gonna play out even as we open higher all right and then let's take a look at the S&P 500 hourly now remember this video is specifically looking at the RSI 50 cross otherwise we could be looking at other parameters but this video was specifically trying to understand how to use the RSI 50 so here we can see S&P 500 even at the open still within resistance of this line which has been where it has been stalling so net net if you came in short there's no need to get out of your short position until the market can clear this line because if we can visualize this we can see that resistance here and if we break back below RSI 50 on the daily that's gonna be a big down hour which might move the market lower so market bulls have a task and the task is simply to move above the red line let's take a look at the daily for the S&P 500 which is the one that is closest to RSI 50 S&P 500 daily and we can see right now at around 52 so let's see whether it can hold about 50 and if it can that's good remember yesterday's strong bounce back above 50 when it spent most of the day below 50 was a sign of a market that was showing intent of moving higher so we'll see how this is gonna play out for the rest of the day if you came in short I have no reason to to see on the charts why one would be getting out even as the market opens higher and the reason again is based on the hourly so let me conclude here you go back to that hourly chart for the s p 500 let me update that you can see that we are still remember this is still within resistance level so the market needs to move above that line otherwise this could still be a trap after coming off recent lows here so this could still be a trap if the market is unable to move above this line we should also be sensitive to the idea that if the S&P 500 fails to hold current levels and the daily RSI drops below 50 that's gonna be setting the stage for a big down day so still if you're coming into this short based on what I'm seeing here on the hourlies even as the market opens higher I think you can still continue holding on to your short position until the market definitively clears that hourly resistance so I'm gonna pause the video here and I'm gonna continue after the close all right I'll see you in the next edition as we continue on with this series again this is morning of March 8th 2008 all right, I'll see you in a bit. Eric Mothers, mother .com. So I didn't get a chance to record yesterday's close. So we are in the next morning for March 9th, 2018. I want to show you the close for the market as of yesterday. S&P 500. Now remember, this video series is talking about only the RSI. 50 crossing nothing else all right so before I show you the market open here let's take a look at the close yesterday S&P 500 continues to hold above 50 trading at 52 and change closed up about 0.45 take a look at the Dow Dow was up 93 points at the close Dow getting close to moving above 50 
now at 47 and change take a look at the nasdaq which closed at up 0.42 percent and it continues to trade now in the 60s if we take a look at the hourly charts we can see that we are still within reasonable resistance on the nasdaq hourly take a look at the dow the dow also within resist wait a minute nope the dow is a little bit lower let me get that straight dow still within this resistance here unless it can clear that which it might do this morning i'll show you in a bit take a look at the s p 500 and again still within reason of or within range of resistance on this line so we are about to open here and let me show you what the markets were doing pre-market whoops markets were up about 200 points in the pre-market so let's go to live trading and so we are opening higher so should be showing an open of about 200 points that was the indicated open in the pre-market action and then we'll take a look at the charts and see what they're telling us in relationship to the RSI 50 phenomenon. Now, one would suspect that the Dow has a chance now to move above 50. I'll take a look at the charts and see what they look like here in a second. Let the numbers settle in. So I'll pause the video for a couple of seconds and I'll be back. All right, so market's been open for about three minutes. We are called high about about 150 on the Dow. Let's take a look at those charts. Now remember we were looking at this as being already setting ourselves up for a move lower based on how the hourly was positioning itself. So let's take a look at the S&P 500 hourly here at the open. We can see that it is above our previous line but coming back to another line. So a little bit of a confusion there. So I guess here, if you already have a short position and you are building a position, you'd have to wait for this to start pointing down again to show resistance on the black line. Take a look at the Dow. The Dow is not looking bad at all but still within resistance so it depends on how this plays out but again if you are short you can stay short because of this line or add there's really no major buy signal on this chart otherwise if you get stopped out let's say you had a stop a tight stop then you get stopped out and that's just fine Let's take a look at the Nasdaq. Oops. And then we'll take a look at the daily charts. Now recall, I think was whoa, what am I doing? Hold on. Recall that the S P five hundred was supposed to have been down two days ago, but it held above fifty. Remember the indication there was that because it held above fifty, that was a short term bullish signal we take a look at the nasdaq on the hourly and we can see the line we were drawing it is now trading above that line which means that it has a chance to continue moving higher unless it is actually coming back to test this top side here so the only way you can add to a bearish position now is to wait for the nasdaq to confirm resistance on the black line you have to wait for it to turn down and show resistance on the black line before you can add on to your short position now recall that this black line is actually more consistent with this pullback from the highs so the black line would be more of a reliable sell signal because it now 
corresponds with the major highs over the last couple of weeks. So we are coming back to test that line. And of course, whether we break out or we show resistance would determine the next meaningful direction. Let's take a look at the daily here. And of course, the NASDAQ should be trading well above 60 now. And you can see the NASDAQ continues to trade well above 60 on the daily. Coming back to test the level around the 61.8. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 trading at now close to 55. Let's take a look at the Dow. So now the Dow needs to move above 50 if it is going to confirm this as a good positive gain. Otherwise, otherwise, if the Dow fails to move above RSI 50, failure by the Dow to move above RSI 50 would be short-term negative. So right now, I would still expect this market to be within reasonable range of resistance once the hourly charts confirm resistance, as we've seen with the NASDAQ, especially in the Dow and the S&P 500, if the hourly resistance goes on to be confirmed on this top side resistance line, this line which corresponds to the major top on the NASDAQ, if that line ends up being resistance hour to hour, then that is where one can look for adding on to their short position. In other words, you'd want to wait for the market to confirm hourly resistance by once we turn into the new hour and we see resistance on the hourly charts that is where you can add on to your short position because resistance on this line here would be a good enough reliable spot to add to your short position anticipating a market reversal and i would take that view that even as the market moves higher adding on to short position in my opinion continues to make more sense so i'm gonna stop the video here and i'll be back at the close and see how this plays out all right still positioning ourselves for short positions based on hourly chart resistance eric mother mother.com as always good luck peace and blessings e i c s Mwah. Okay, I could not pass up on this opportunity here. It is now about two hours. Actually about, let me see here, about, yes, close to two hours since the market opened. And take a look at the gain for the day. The market is now trading above 50 on the daily chart for the Dow. So, remember this video is pretty much based on the RSI 50 crossing. And I don't want to pass up on this opportunity here because it's a good lesson for all of us. So for March 9th, market's been open for about two hours. I want to show you what the daily charts look like. We can see that the Dow right now is holding back above RSI 50, which opens the possibility for a big up day. Right now. We also know that should the Dow fail to hold above RSI 50, remember the Dow closed yesterday, I think was about 47.8, somewhere on there, let's call it about 48, approximately 48 on the daily RSI. So the Dow has an opportunity of moving above 50 today for a big up day into the close into the close it would be similar to this period here we had this price acceleration over two days as the Dow moved above 50 we also know that if the Dow fails to hold 50 then that is going to be a bearish sign for the market short term indication that the market has run out of juice if we take a look at the let's take a look at the hourly for the Dow first and foremost and we can see the hourly for the Dow. We can see two resistance lines. 
Of course, there is a line around the RSI 50 that we've been watching. And the market is clearing that level. Now, keep in mind, this becomes very risky. So, let me explain. So, the market is coming back to test that line. Because of uniformity, you can be breaking out one instant and in the next hour show uniformity. In other words, the market can trap people to go long before it changes direction. So right now we are seeing the Dow moving above the red line, which is bullish. Now the problem becomes if you fail to see or if you fail to respect uniform activity rejection. If it happens, anything that looks like that down the road is going to be a sell signal. So even though we are moving above the line, we are still vigilant for the market changing direction quickly. Now, don't forget, we also talked at the open that this is the major resistance level. The reason why it is major is based on what it pertains to. This line is responsible for the market coming off the highs. It became resistance here again. So this line is actually the stronger resistance line. So we are watching those two. In other words, is nothing stopping the Dow moving higher so that it can come back to test this line? Right here. And so this line at some point is going to be the major resistance line if the market wants to go that high, which it has a chance of moving that high now that the Dow is above 50, if it can hold above 50. Let's take a look at the SPX on the hourly. SPX is within reasonable range of this resistance line on the hourly, the line that corresponds with coming off the highs. So, market bulls would need to clear this line if there's going to be a substantial move from current levels. Those who are bearish can wait to see confirmation of resistance here. That confirmation of resistance would be where you want to add on to any short position. Remember, in theory, in theory, You'd rather go short here or here or here as opposed to going short during sell-offs. So this becomes where ideally you'd want to go short once you see confirmation of resistance on this line. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 daily. See what the RSI is doing. RSI continues to trade above 50. Now let's just say let's just say the market wants to be very what's the word? Let's say the market wants to play nasty. It can change direction and because the S&P 500 closed above 50, 50 at about 53 if the market wants to be nasty it can drop the it can turn around turn red and move the S&P 500 below 50 for a nasty down day or what can be called a turnaround reversal day. Now if that happens, S&P 500 would drop below 50 and that would be good for a big down day on the SPX. But right now the Dow is moving above 50. We have to allow the Dow the chance of having a good update. Take a look at the NASDAQ. Right now, we are seeing that net-net, it is now officially attacking the recent intraday high on a daily closing basis also. So it is coming back to test the breakout level. Okay. Now that is consistent, by the way, something I didn't want to discuss, but maybe I should or should have is the weekly chart for the major averages. We held RSI 50 
In other words, this drop did not move below 50. And once we held this level here, the indication was that the market would have to test the highs. Test the highs and maybe even break out. And this was evidence once we held this hourly level. No, this weekly support level on the 50. In fact, right now, if we go to the weekly chart, we can see that because we held 50 here, and because we held above 50 again for the S&P 500, actually, there is a good reason to draw a line connecting the lows. And if the NASDAQ has tested the highs, it means that it is not out of the realm of possibilities that the S&P 500 will come back to test the highs on the weekly closing basis and maybe even break out. Why? Because generally what happens is once you hold RSI 50 on any time frames, it means that there's a good chance you're going to test the highs or break out. If we take a look at the Dow, we can see the Dow also holding above RSI 50 twice. We can also say that this was the breakout right there. That was a very, very successful breakout. Very successful. Of course, we know that from hindsight. We take that information and draw our support line. And we can see we bounced on this line twice, which is perfect uniformity. I am assuming by now that you are familiar with this method. Otherwise, take a look in my YouTube channel. I'm going to have a playlist by this name or lots of playlists by this name. So this indicates that there is a good likelihood that we are going to actually have to test the highs on a weekly closing basis for the Dow, if not break out above it because of this double bottom support that is what the market is indicating right now we continue pushing today highs and the reason again is because we are seeing the Dow let me see here move above RSI 50 on the daily so the Dow is having a big up day and generally when you move above 50 you tend to have a reaction or move to the upside and you tend to close at the highs of the day the only thing that would negate this is if the Dow was to stall around here and by end of day it is back below 50 if we go back to that hourly chart for the Dow we can see the only thing that could stem this move is this line here on the hourly and we have yet to reach that level the following instruments SPX is at that level so this could be where S&P 500 starts stalling we take a look at the Nasdaq which is already breaking out the Nasdaq is definitely coming back to test that level and of course this is from this break line off the highs so the Nasdaq right now is definitely and I would believe attempting to stage a fresh intraday high fresh all-time intraday highs so resistance around current levels would be where you'd want to add on to short position but you also have to be very careful and I'll show you why because on the NASDAQ 
we can go to the monthly chart and the monthly for the Nasdaq is breaking up and this is a very strong breakout because we are moving above the previous monthly closing high at 7411.48 I think it's kind of sad that I know that number off head whoa all right RSI is very strong it's trading above 69.1 in fact it's been above 69.1 since early 2017 so more than a year now this is a fresh breakout would be similar to this breakout here right there so what that would mean is that as long as we are trading above this number the bulls are firmly in control there's no there's no way of looking at this no other way as long as we are breaking out we could have a move similar to this move here after this breakout now we can also see that the MACDs are trading at three-year highs So the MACDs have been strong and so this breakout meets the minimum requirements for the ultimate more the breakout there should be links in the description of the video so as we see the Nasdaq moving to fresh daily highs in fact I would suspect looks like an intraday high Let's take a look here looks like an intraday high all-time high and this is consistent with what we are calling here to be a fresh monthly breakout now while I'm on this topic of the Nasdaq breaking out let's keep in mind that at some point we can also continue watching this number because a failed breakout or if and when the Nasdaq moves below this number that would be for a major sell signal so failure to hold above this line down the road can be used as a reason to be bearish So we are seeing the Nasdaq here coming off the highs of the day as we come close to the end of the hour. Now that might play a role on terms of how the hourly charts are going to set up. So we didn't keep those highs for the hour. We are off the highs. Now we begin a new hour. And if the market shows resistance on the hourly going forward, those hourly charts could be giving us an indication that short term this is where one would be adding on to their short positions now let me share with you what i mean by that let's take a look at the let's go to the nasdaq this is the hourly let me update that and you can see on the hourly we're pretty much coming back to test the line we've been watching now, let me draw it a little different right there so depending on how the next couple of hours go this is where if we see resistance if we see resistance then one can add to a short position while understanding that if we break out above this line that is indication of a market that is poised for even 
higher prices. Now we can even take a look at this from a two year, no, two hourly chart, not two year, but two hourly chart. So two, each of these bars here is representative of one of two hours, two hours for each bar. Oh, let me draw this. Maybe I should just draw it this way. So we are coming back to test this level here. The level happens to be at about 61.8. So depending on how things go, keep in mind, we are seeing a historic day here because we are moving above the prior hourly closing highs. And I believe we just did record fresh all-time intraday highs. So this is where the magic is going to take place. And I believe the magic is going to be played out here on this hourly chart. Either we break out and continue pushing, surging higher, or we end up showing resistance on this line and we start pulling back. So that's what I'm going to be watching to see what's going on. Now, something else also I need to point out here is with the breakout of the NASDAQ, let me share with you another level to watch on the two-year weekly chart. So what we see here is with this move, the NASDAQ is effectively breaking out or attempting to break out above the current confirmed all-time weekly closing high going back from early in the year, I believe it was January. The level to watch there is the NASDAQ needs to hold above 5.705.77. Anything above this number is very bullish. And if the NASDAQ moves back below this number, that's a sign of a potential failed breakout. So in other words, you'd have to wait for a failed breakout below this number You'd also have to wait for the hourly to confirm resistance before you can go short. So I would say right now two things to watch for is hourly resistance as we've discussed in this video and also you'd want to wait for the NASDAQ to move back below this number before you can add or initiate short positions. Otherwise if the NASDAQ is breaking out on the hourly and if the NASDAQ is holding above this number, you can expect the market to be absolutely strong and to continue pushing to new all-time highs. And again, we should not forget that the Dow is the one that is moving above RSI 50 for the day. So the Dow has an opportunity here to close at the highs of the day and have a nice day because it is moving above RSI 50. So that's the key. As long as the Dow is moving above 50 and holding above 50, then that is indication of a market that is going to close close to the highs of the day and for a good gain. Right now, we're already seeing a good gain of about 1%. And don't forget that this could be setting the stage for an options expiration week, which is going to be next week. Today being a Friday, let's not be surprised that the option expiration week brings a reversal in the market. If we take a look at the Dow 30-minute chart, we can see potential for resistance get the right so there's a line we can draw here markets coming back to test that level so that's one potential layer of resistance and also we can see that this is where it broke down recently this break RSI is coming to be tested again so around current levels if we start seeing a pullback that is where you can start adding onto a short position. Remember, we might be setting the stage for reversal next week as we go into what is normally 
our volatile options expiration week. And in the here and now, the level to watch is the NASDAQ. And this NASDAQ breakout is one that can give us indication of what to do. So I think it's important to stress here, the level to watch is anything above this number is bullish. Failure to hold this number is a reason to add on or to initiate some short positions because the last thing the bulls want to see is a failed breakout at this level. A failed breakout would be a sign of a market running out of momentum, while a successful breakout, on the other hand, should scare the bears because this is a market that could see a substantial push to fresh, improved all-time highs. All right, we are coming close to the end of the day. Remember, the Dow today was moving above 50. And now you'll see what happens when an instrument moves above 50. The Dow is up 430 points and is poised. We have about four minutes to go before the close. Looks like it is going to close at the highs of the day, which is pretty much one of the characteristics of what happens when an instrument moves above 50. So it's going to close towards these current levels because that's what happens when an instrument moves above 50 on the daily time frame. All right. And it moves and stages a move. Sorry about that. Now let's take a look at the, of course, S&P 500 is also having a nice day. Take a look at the hourly chart for the NAS, no, for the S&P 500. We are still within the top side of this line. In fact, I'll be honest with you. I just, in the last hour, in the last hour, I, I sent subscribers, paid subscribers to mother.com some short ideas in anticipation of what I'm looking at. Take a look at the Dow hourly. Coming back to the top side. Now, we moved above the previous resistance level that we've been watching pretty much all week, which was here. So the red line was cleared. Now the market is coming back and trying to test the top side here. So we'll see how we, we, we um, trade into the new week. Remember, we have an options expiration week with about 30 seconds to go. We can see we are going to close at the highs of the day. No surprise, because that is a characteristic of what happens when you're moving above 50. So no surprise that the market is going to hold on to all of its gains as is you know, what is expected when the market is moving above 50. So there we go. There's a close. All right. So we'll see how things settle out, but pretty much closing at the highs of the day. And remember, we've seen the NASDAQ breakout. As you can see on the daily, you get a nice view of what is going on. NASDAQ closing at fresh, all-time, daily closing highs. So now, as long as this daily breakout is successful, then we know that the market is going to continue being strong. Now, let me share with you why I did send that premium tweet for subscribers to start thinking about going short is because we are coming back to test this daily line here. So as we start the new week, this is going to be a level to watch for potential resistance. And also, of course, we have the hourly for the NASDAQ, which is, to be honest, is above the resistance level. It's not, I think that's okay. As long as it holds above the blue line, then you give it the benefit of the doubt. As we begin the new week, we'll see whether it's going to drop back below the blue line. So either, either this is a breakout or a trap. 
So we know it's a breakout as long as it holds above the line. Right there. Right now it is protruding just above the line, so we give you the benefit of the doubt that the bulls are in control. We'll know that the bears are in control if and when we drop below that line. So, all right. Let me see here. Dow closing up at the highs of the day, up 440. Let's take a look at the Dow daily, which was moving above 50. Now, recall, let me go back to that S&P 500. SPX. Recall there was a day here where this was supposed to be a down day. But the S&P 500, which was down below 50, was having a, a down day, but recovered to close back above 50. And that was, once you see a market defend 50, it generally tends to, sus to suggest that there is going to be a recovery. So because we didn't drop below 50, indication was that the market was planning to go higher. And now we can see the Dow today confirming a strong close on the daily because the daily started the day with the RSI below 48 and ended the day above 54. So this daily move above 50 is why we had this massive update. So all in all, we have to give the benefit of the doubt to the bulls. As long as the NASDAQ is breaking out, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. As long as it is breaking out on the daily, as long as the NASDAQ is breaking out on the weekly, see here, breaking out on the weekly, that is indication of a market that wants to go higher as long as the weekly chart breakout is successful and of course if we fail to hold above the breakout level that would be a bearish sign and then we can also see that as long as the nasdaq is breaking out on the monthly chart we have to assume that net net this is a market that could see higher prices and if you want to play this perfectly the best thing to do is always if you want to go against the market is wait for the very at the very least for a failed breakout attempt right now these charts are so strong that if the market is going to see the uh, nasdaq 8000 and beyond is because of this breakout so i'm going to stop right there nice day for the dow moving above 50 i just sent out a uh, premium tweet to trade mother.com subscribers looking at the charts i was looking at in terms of the hourly charts for the dow especially i think this is where if you wanted to go short the hourly charts for the dow let me conclude by going there let's go to the dow hourly now recall if the if the nasdaq can break out there's nothing stopping the Dow from also breaking out. If we take a look at the hourly, in conclusion here, let's see whether I get this right. Dow hourly. All right, there we go. No, that's the daily. Excuse me. Oh, here we go. All right, so the Dow hourly, in my opinion, still coming back to test this level here. And I'm also watching the level around 61.8. If we stall around here, then that is where we can start thinking of taking a short position. Don't forget, I also notice that there's a line connecting the daily trend line. That's why I sent that premium tweet for subscribers. For those who want to be aggressive, you anticipate a pullback on that line and a pullback on this line, which means if you are building a short position, this is where you'd start building your short position. Again, a great day for the Dow Daily as it moved above RSI 50. 
So in conclusion, bring back the closing prices. That's how the market is closing. We'll see how things go. I did end the week by uh, taking a look at the charts and I, in my, in my own mind, I see the hourly as giving a market some trouble around here. So for subscribers who want to be aggressive, I sent them some short ideas. We'll see how things go. By the time you watch this video, you're going to have the benefit of studying what happened after this current market close. This is a, today being a Friday. So you're going to have the luxury of knowing what happened after the fact. Eric Mwadith, Mother Mother com as always good luck, peace, and blessings. E I C S. All right. Now, fast forward. It's been past the weekend. This is Monday trading. We have about, let's call it about a minute before the close. As we continue on with this series, talking about RSI 50. Market's having a little bit of a sideways. Let's call it NASDAQ is up. about 0.5 and the Dow is down about 0.5 also so pretty much they're in the opposite direction of each other and this is how it looks like we're about to close the instrument that is closest to RSI 50 of course is going to be the Dow because the Dow is the one that moved above RSI 50 on Friday for that big update so we'll see how we close and then we're going to take a look at the charts and then we'll continue on with this series as I continue recording things here. So I'm about to close. There's the close. All right. And this is now for March 12th, 2018. Pretty much, let's call it a little bit of a down day. And we can take a look at the S&P 500. We can see, you know, it's not. There's nothing really I would say that is very bearish or bullish. It's trading above 50, which is net, net good. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe we can say that seems like with today's action, the market could be coming back to respond to this level, which goes back to the previous break on the S&P 500. That would be consistent with some of the charts we're looking at. Take a look at the NASDAQ, which continues to stage a nice day. We can see again, still within range of daily resistance, right here. And if we take a look at the, let's take a look at the Dow again. The Dow is the one that is closest to moving below RSI 50 at some point. Here, you can see it's coiled down for the day, and closing down about 156. So what I can do is, let me update the chart to show the close. We can see that, remember, late Friday, I think into the last hour, I sent some short ideas for subscribers because I was seeing the possibility of this taking shape based on the hourly. Let's take a look at the hourly for the Dow. There you go. All right. So on the hourly, of course, we have this resistance that I've been talking about. And the market seems to have been coming back to test that level. We are responding with our pullback. So as long as the Dow is showing resistance on this line, we continue expecting the market to stall around current levels. And also we know that the market can, whenever it wants to, if it wants to, also have a chance to break out. So until we break out, we can still lean towards a market that could pull back because the next move above or below 50 on the daily is going to be for a movement lower because S&P 500 is above 50 on the daily RSI, NASDAQ is above 50 on the daily RSI, and the Dow is just a little bit above 50. So the next movement, either above or below daily RSI 50, is going to be the Dow potentially moving below RSI 50. So that idea to go short and stay short as of late Friday continues to, to be relevant. Remember on the two hourly chart, we had drawn this line here, anticipating resistance on this line, which was also the break. So I'll rec continue recording this series here. As you can see, 
as long as we are below this line we can continue expecting the market to pull back oh another way of looking at this is it's quite obvious for anybody who's looking at this that right now as long as we are trading around current levels there seems to be a trend line that is developing on the top if you take the tops of the hourly chart into a day highs you can see there's a channel here that connects the tops there the top there and Friday's top so as long as we sh we are seeing resistance either on this line or on this blue line we continue expecting that the next major move either below or above 50 is going to be for the Dow which closed just a tad above RSI 50 so being short suggests that you are anticipating at some point the next major market move in terms of day-to-day -day swing action to be for a potential move lower as the Dow cracks below RSI 50 additionally if we connect this line here connecting the lows on the daily and extend it out should be something like that in fact let me draw it with a fresh looking chart so connecting this line right here like that that should be something like that we can see that this is the previous support line on the daily RSI connecting the lows here double bottom connecting that low that low that low close to that low gives us this break gives us this resistance which is that top on a short term basis and then we can also draw another line stemming from the break point something like that you can see the market has responded to this line here and now here so as long as we are seeing all these resistance points and again you can take the top side into the highs here on the daily and it connects the tops as long as we are seeing price resistance and these two lines the red and the blue line here in terms of RSI cross above or below 50 the next potential move is gonna be for movement lower so it only makes sense to get ahead of this potential slash back below RSI 50 I'll stop right there and continue the series otherwise I'm thinking I might maybe maybe I might I might right now after I record this video I'm gonna add the video I made previous to this daily trade in other words I might decide I'm gonna think about this I might include what I recorded as after the conclusion of Friday's action which was on the 9th so if you see that the next segment of this series is going to be Friday's action I'm just going back to show you what I concluded after the close of Friday's action otherwise I'll continue on with this series I think I find it very interesting that we are looking at markets day to day at the close or sometimes at the open to understand how we can use the RSI 50 cross all right I'll continue on into the next series Mwah. Woo. and the level to watch here is seven five zero five point seven seven so as long as we are holding above this price it means that this market and the general market at large has an opportunity now to record an improvement to recent price levels and we can use the same number because should we drop back below this price that would indicate a failed weekly breakout which could be a red flag so anybody wanting to short the market would want to see the market move the 
NASDAQ back below this number, which would indicate a failed breakout. Otherwise, as of the close, we have to assume that this market wants to go higher as long as it is trading above this number. Now keep in mind, we see that we had previously been bouncing on the RSI 50 and because of that uniform activity bounce, market's been going back to test the highs and actually break out. We tested the, the RSI 50 here. Indication was that the market would test the highs. It actually tested the highs and went higher. We had uniform activity bounce back above the RSI 50 here. Indication was that the market would test the highs, if not break out. And now we can see over the last couple of weeks, we came and held RSI 50, and we can see the market has come back to test the highs and actually decided to break out. So as long as we are holding above 7505.77, we have to give the market the benefit of the doubt to move higher. And again, failure to hold above this level indicates that the market is due for a pullback. Same price level on the daily. So same conclusion here on the daily. The previous daily closing high was the same as the weekly. So as long as we are above this price, the market should remain strong. And should we drop back below this price, that's going to be a short-term sell signal. Now let me go back to the weekly chart because this is where we can start looking for reason why this market could pull back. So number one, the first, if the market is to pull back, the first order of business is for the bears to move the market back below the breakout level. And so one more time, the market would have to drop below this level. And for that to take place, and also, we would need to see negative divergence. We see an improvement with a fresh weekly closing high, and we would need to see negative divergence before any aggressive move to be short. So, so those are some of the visual cues we are looking for. Negative divergence and also a failed weekly breakout will set the stage for a market pulling back. Otherwise, it's very, I guess, risky to try and short a market that is still successfully breaking out. So I think the biggest thing to look for if you are looking for short opportunity is to wait for the NASDAQ to fail on its weekly and daily breakout. Otherwise, it's very risky to try and short a very strong market. And if you are bullish, as long as the market is holding above this price level, you have all the reason in the world to be an aggressive buyer of the market. I should also point out that if the market moves above RSI 69.1 on the weekly, expect the market to pick up momentum to the upside. It would be similar to this period here, where the NASDAQ went above 69.1, and we had this very strong multi-month rally. So if the NASDAQ moves above 69.1 on the weekly, expect the market to pick up momentum to the upside. Now let me show you one line that could come in play. There's a line here coming from the lows of 2016. We can draw at the previous RSI support line should be something like that. So it connects the lows here, here, and here. So we can see that the market could be coming back to test the recent break. In other words, if this becomes resistance, that could be another visual reason for a pullback. Just something to keep in mind that this could become a problem for the NASDAQ and it could also coincide with our observation of negative divergence. 
So let's just be on the lookout for that line. If the market is unable to move above the previous break line, that could become a problem. Again, this is a previous support line on the weekly. You draw it like that. Let's take a look at that daily chart. Show you something on the daily. The Nasdaq on the daily also. It's a level to watch here is this recent break. We can see that break led to a pullback. And so now it needs to clear this line here. So failure to move above the blue line might be the beginning of the early signs that the market is due to stall. Now we also should be vigilant here because should we stall around current RSI levels, then what that would suggest is an improvement day to day and that would form negative divergence. So remember, generally when you see a pullback of some size, we, you always see that there was negative divergence. So should we see negative divergence plus a failed daily breakout, then that is when we can become aggressive sellers of the market. Until then, the market did close with a breakout. We have to respect the potential for improvement in prices. So in conclusion, as long as we are breaking out on the daily, on the weekly, and on the monthly, we have to respect the potential for upside. If the daily or weekly or monthly eventually fail, that would be a sign of a market that is due for a major correction. Eric Mother.com. As always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E, A, C, S. All right, this is for March 13th at the very open. This is the close. So what I'm going to do here, I want to record a couple minutes here of today's open because the market is gapping up at the open. Keep in mind, we had come into the week today being a Tuesday. We had come into the week with short ideas. The market did open with the Dow up 130 points plus. And just want to record this so we can see how the markets are going to respond by the end of the day. Just want to take a look at here. Go back, take a look at that Dow daily chart. Keep in mind, Dow daily is the one that is closest to RSI 50. Remember, this video is just looking at the RSI 50. And what we've done is gone short in anticipation that if the hourly charts are still showing resistance, that the general market is still going to have to pull back. And we are trying to get ahead of the big down day if the Dow is to drop below daily RSI 50. You can see our hourly chart continues to show resistance. So we can continue being short. And also we had this line here on the price. So even as the market gaps up, there is no reason that I can see that tells us we need to get out of our short positions. Of course, we would have to change our mind and our outlook if the market was to clear the blue line in terms of the RSI resistance. And if the Dow is to go on and clear the top side resistance in terms of price. So I'm going to stop recording the video here this morning. I'll come back at the close. This is how things are shaping up for the rest of the day. Uh, I still think that the short ideas that we've been holding, we can continue holding. In fact, right now, as I, as I even record this video, I am already setting a group of stocks that I am going to be sending to subscribers in terms of short ideas. And in fact, these are the stocks that I am preparing to send to subscribers as additional short ideas based on monthly chart resistance and more so based on the uniformity principle. So even though the market is gapping up and based on this ongoing series, I'm still looking at this market to be setting the stage for a pullback. Before I send today's um, premium tweet to paid mother.com subscribers, I'm going to wait for the hourly charts that I'm looking at intraday to confirm downside potential before I send that premium tweet just to make sure that our timing is correct. But even as the market gaps up here and as a continuation of what we've been discussing, I am still positioning 
uh, myself and subscribers into expecting a pullback and again based on where the Dow is trading you want to get ahead of a potential swoosh below the daily RSI 50 level so that's it for now come back at the close we shall see how we're gonna be trading if I am wrong then of course I am wrong but I think I am gonna be calling this correctly based on what I am looking at but we always want to default to the market because if you think that you know more than the market you end up paying for it so once the market confirms that we are wrong by moving above our RSI hourly resistance lines then we'll get out of that short mentality or bearish mentality and we'll put, consider going long for now we're thinking the market is setting the stage to go lower and that's why I am still looking for additional ideas to be sending to my paid subscribers I'll be back at the close all right we are still in the morning of March 13th 2018 market is moving higher here at the open just wanted to show you how the market is opening and how it is continuing to move higher so you can see that even though I am still thinking the market is short the market continues to go against that view so what I want to do is just take a look at those charts as we are at the highs of the day maybe the market might go higher we'll see but I'm still getting ready to send an email to subscribers about the idea of being short or to sell the market here on the hourly I'm gonna need to see confirmation of this resistance hour to hour before I can send that sh short alert and also on the Dow hourly this line here I would wait to have to see a down hour in other words it's gonna be into the next hour when I see a potential pullback if I see a resistance on this line hour to hour resistance on this line again hour to hour that is when I am going to send that alert for subscribers to short the following stocks which are trading above current prices this is yesterday's close so I'm assuming all of these stocks are trading higher right now but I'll have to wait for the market to confirm hourly resistance before I can consider sending that short idea also on the 30 minute chart for the Dow um, still looking at the potential for topside resistance the point I'm trying to make here is just because I have a short idea and the market is going against me doesn't mean that I have to abandon that idea not necessarily I would abandon the idea to sell the market if the market was to show strength by moving above this resistance line on the Dow so it could be and remember markets are very good at playing games before they go on the direction they truly want to go so I have to be vigilant here not to make a timing mistake at the same time I want to take advantage of the market should the market be setting the stage to go lower and one thing I've been thinking about the last couple of minutes is on the hourly excuse me on the five minute chart for the Dow five minutes with RSI set at 26 so five minute whoops five minute RSI set at 26 I'm looking at this and thinking to myself okay before the hourly chart confirms resistance the five minute might already go might already confirm that resistance keep in mind this is trading around the 61.8 level so if I see this turning down then that's gonna be my also my visual cue with my idea here that this is where we, we need to start taking advantage of a potential pullback so I'm watch I'm also watching this five minute chart for potential resistance and I can actually even draw a line like this we seem to be suggesting that around here if I wanna send that alert to be selling the market I might wanna consider doing so right now so what I'm gonna do here is I think because we have about five minutes or more about seven minutes before the end of the hour I'm gonna wait for the hourly charts to confirm resistance before I send that alert for subscribers to consider shorting the sale ideas right now the five minute is encouraging me to start thinking about it 
but I'm going to have to wait for the hourly charts to confirm resistance because I don't also want to make a timing mistake. So I have to be patient, wait for the hourly charts to turn here. Once I see confirmation of resistance, then I'm going to go ahead and send that alert for subscribers to short or sell the ideas that I have just shown you over the last couple of minutes. All right, this is a fast forward about five minutes and I'm going to update this chart to show you why I sent a premium tweet to subscribers advising them of the short ideas I just mentioned because now we can see that this has turned into resistance. This is uniform activity rejection. So I have a visual reason to take advantage of that. Whether it's going to be successful or not is another is another story altogether, but we can only go by what we see. And again, this is a five minute window. The market did go on to confirm what I was looking at here, or what we were looking at. And if I was to give you a snapshot, markets come off the highs here over the last 10 minutes. All right. So that's why I had to act. In fact, let me show you. Just for the sake, remember this is supposed to be an educational video. I have no way of knowing what the market is going to do, but it is a good lesson for all of us to see whether this is going to be good reasoning or not. Remember, we are looking at primarily at the RSI 50 cross in this video. It's the only thing we are looking at. I'm using that to position ourselves before the Dow potentially drops below 50. All right, it's a long video. It's been going on for almost a week. But that is just the, the gist of this video is RSI 50. This is ideas I just posted to subscribers. Let me see whether I can. All right, so those, those are the picks right there. All right, so we see all of them there. Let's go back to our chart. And I'm going to update this Dow hourly chart now. And still looks like we are still showing resistance even after today's open you can see at the highs of the day it's obvious that market participants are watching that level now just because we saw resistance in the last hour doesn't mean there's nothing this is where we have to be very careful there's nothing that says the market can't eventually break out it can break out even now it can break out in the next couple of hours it can break out tomorrow it can break out in a couple of days. It can break out above this line next week, right? It can break out whenever it wants. So we are always at the mercy of the market. The market can break out whenever it wants. But as long as right now we are seeing resistance, I am using this resistance as a reason to position ourselves short or to continue staying short the Dow has yet to move above this line on the hourly. So I'm going to continue holding my view. As long as we see the Dow unable to move above the top side line and the blue line. The red line and the blue line continue being resistance for the Dow. So I have no problem continuing on to hold on to that short idea. Let's take a look at the 30 minute chart which we had looked at earlier. And we continue looking at a market that has yet to clear the top side. So we can still visually have a good reason to continue holding for a bearish move. And again, of the major averages, the Dow is trading with its RSI closest to 50. SPX should be good. Holding at about 60. XP SPX still not above this line but it could eventually break out we shall see the strongest of the major averages is the nasdaq which is trading at all-time highs and still within within reason it is doing its best to break out but it is still within reason of resistance based on this line and that's why i have no problem being short now keep in mind, 
if we take a look at the weekly chart for the Nasdaq, and this is something I haven't, sh maybe I did share this over the weekend, the previous video where I was discussing the weekend analysis. If the Nasdaq was to turn negative here, improvement last week to new highs. If the Nasdaq turns negative for the week, right? So let me share with you my general two major things that I'm looking for. Number one, if it happens, it's going to be very bearish. That's why, in a way, I am trying to cheat here because if this happens, then being ahead of this potential move lower makes sense. Very bearish if two things happen. Number one, 69.1 rejection. Number two, negative divergence confirmation. If these two things happen, I can even start pounding the table with the concept that we are due for a major, major market correction, and this might be major, major highs. Again, if these two things play out, RSI 69.1 rejection and negative divergence and ultimately at some point should we also fail to hold the current weekly breakout for the Dow which is something I discussed in the weekend video that I have already attached to this ongoing analysis if we also see the weekly breakout fail, now that would be reason number three so number three would be failed weekly breakout These three things would be very, very bearish. And again, let me repeat, that would be suggestive of a market that is recording major, major highs. I'm talking highs that might be in place for the next five, 10 years plus. If these three things play out. Okay. So that's why I have no problem trying to be short because I can see if it happens then this is where we need to be aggressive shorts, go against a market that is trapping people to go long before it stages a major, major high. The reason why I say that is if you go back, take a look at the major highs in the market, for example, the highs of 2000, highs of 2007, highs of 1987, even the highs of 1929, all of this happened with most of these parameters taking place. Most of them recorded either a 69.1 uniform activity rejection, negative divergence, and they also showed a failed weekly breakout. When those three things happened, they were the setup for what became major market tops. Keep in mind, we've had a fantastic run in the market, and so at some point, you know the market is going to pull back. The question is where? And it's been a tough market to short. But I'm thinking we can start leaning towards that if the NASDAQ weekly chart confirms what I'm discussing here. So I'm going to stop right here. Pretty much I'll be back at the close and see how things played out. All right, let's go. Pause the video for now. I'll be back at the close or maybe at tomorrow, during tomorrow's open. Depends on whether I'm going to be available to record the close or not. All right. This is how things are shaping out. We'll see how we trade for the rest of the day. Got about five hours to go. All right. I'll see you in a little bit. 
All right, we are back here with about three minutes to go before the close. And the market has turned around and we are down. The Dow is down about 0.74% over the last couple of hours. And so that is how we are trading. The Nasdaq is down about 1%. Let's take a look at the Dow daily. And we can see that on the Dow daily we are moving below 50 and that might explain well I mean I wouldn't say it's a big point gain or loss right now let me update that chart this is showing the previous lows of the day when the Dow was down 225 if I update this towards the close looks like we are only down about 165 so at any rate the idea to start shorting the market seems to be the right idea. The market is confirming that it is still showing resistance. As we discussed here, the Dow had come back to test this line on the daily. Oops. And here. So it looks like you know this could be setting up the stage for a pullback over the next couple of days depending on how the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 respond to their RSI 50 level. In fact, here as we close, again this is the close for March 13th. Let's take a look at the Nasdaq. Whoops. All right. NASDAQ daily is confirming that resistance we talked about. Right there. And so it looks like the market is responding to the levels we've been talking about. Take a look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 also confirming resistance on the daily that we've been looking at potential resistance that is and we can see this also on the Dow hourly based on the RSI line here now this goes back to about late last week on the 9th we had already seen the possibility of this resistance and also we've been looking at this from a different vantage point which is intraday highs and earlier this morning when the Dow was up 180 points close to 200 points in the morning we hit that level and the market has pulled back so far and also there's a line connecting the top side resistance so for now I guess we just have to see how the next couple of days are gonna go but looks like our our action to take some short ideas is consistent with what we were seeing and the market seems to be responding to it so as long as the market is responding to our analysis we have to con continue holding that bearish view to expect lower prices in the coming days and keep in mind if we're gonna see a major market pullback it's going to be because S&P 500 might also have to move below RSI 50. If the S&P 500 moves below RSI 50, that's going to increase this downdraft. And the NASDAQ also, depending on whether it gets to the 50 level, that might also add more downside pressure. So right now, we'll see how things go. I'll stop for now and we will continue over the next couple of days. Remember, this video is looking at only the RSI 50 cross phenomena. In fact, let's take a look at the hourly here when the Dow, Dow hourly closed at RSI 50 level. So this hour here, so a sizable expansion in price action as the Dow dropped below 50. Now remember, there's nothing stopping the market from recovering, for example, Dow can recapture back above 50. We can see that the Dow daily, now that it closed below 50, can 
recover back above 50, recover back above the 50-day moving average, and also break out above the declining line. So even though we have an idea here that the market is beginning to stall, we should always respect the potential for the market to do whatever it wants. All right, so this is the close of the day. We shall continue on with this series. All right, as you can see, we've started the trading session for the following day today, being for March 14th. Market's been open for about 12 minutes. We were higher at the open. And just wanted to show you that we, as, as of yesterday's close, as you know, the market did close with the RSI for the Dow just below 50. And at the open, the market, let me update this now the market was above 50. This is a big deal because we started the day with the Dow moving above 50. If the Dow is rejected when trying to move above 50, that's not a good sign for the general market. Remember a couple of days ago, S&P 500 was given support or the market supported the S&P 500 as it tried to drop below 50 in other words it spent some of the day below 50 but closed above 50 which was a sign of a market that was due for a short term move higher and we can see we are opening the morning here having gone above rsi 50 now below it that's not a very good sign and as long as the market is not moving above 50 we are still looking at a market that in our estimation that should be still looking to go lower and even as i speak here i see the market has stand down after opening higher as you saw at the open i think was up about 120 130 points all right so i'm gonna pause here let me take a look at the hourly let's take a look at the hourly for the dow Keep in mind the hourly also opened the hour moving above 50. We are still looking at this rejection from previous analysis. We shall see how it's going to go. More importantly for this series, let's take a look at the SPX trading at about 55. The risk is if the Dow is misbehaving, this might drag the S&P 500 below rsi 50 at some point for a big down day that's why we wanted to get ahead of any swoosh lower take a look at the nasdaq and the nasdaq is trading at 61. so depending on how things go if the dow continues drifting lower it's gonna pull s p 500 and the nasdaq closer and closer to that rsi 50 level so i'll pause right here more than likely i'll be back at the close all right and again early trading for march 14th 2018 all right i'll see you in a in a bit in a couple of hours all right as we approach the close of march 14th 2018 markets are not at the lows, we've been lower. I think the Dow was down more than 300 points, but we are about two minutes away from the close. 
we are getting that down day. Remember, as we opened, the Dow was moving above 50, but it reversed. And I mentioned that usually that means it is not strong and that we can start positioning or at least continue expecting that pullback that has been in our minds and hence the reason why we have been playing the market with the opinion and pretty much at the end of the day concluding that it is best to be short the market based on some of the things we've been looking at over the last couple of days. So you can take a look here, take a look at the Dow. We begin with the Dow daily and of course the Dow daily is now back below RSI 50. Having been above 50 today, we can also see generically that there's a resistance now as it tried to recapture back above the 50 day moving average. We take a look also at the Dow. Remember, we had come back to test this break line. We had seen resistance and that gave us the conclusion that we needed to be short the market. We can see that if we take a look at the S&P 500, right now we are trading around the 50 RSI level. That is gonna be interesting. S&P 500, is inching closer and closer to that RSI. There is a close. S&P 500, as I said, was inching closer towards that RSI 50 level on a day-to-day -day basis. That might come into play over the next couple of days. We shall see. This is how we are looking to settle out at the, at the conclusion of this trading session. So the down day on the Dow and the markets generally is no surprise based on what we've been discussing. We can see that the NASDAQ still showing resistance on this break line. Going back to the break right here. So this pullback is consistent with what we've been looking at. And one number we were watching was the NASDAQ holding above 755.77. And if it is below that price, then the weekly breakout is stalling. And of course, you know that means that we need to be looking at this as a market that is more and more looking very bearish. So that's the conclusion. I haven't seen anything yet that tells me I need to be changing my stance Remember, if the market is failing to hold the NASDAQ breakout on the weekly, then this is a market that could be seeing a major, major top. We discussed that a couple of, uh, I think it was yesterday. The negative divergence on the weekly for the NASDAQ and also moving below RSI, no, moving below the weekly breakout. So let me show the NASDAQ here. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Take a look at the weekly. And we start seeing signs of a major top here. As long as we continue seeing this negative divergence. Remember number one was the negative divergence. Which is already starting to form. Number two. was a 69.1 rejection. Right, which is already taking place. And then number three was the breakout failure. And of course the level we're watching there was 505 0.77 which is where the market is now trading given that we have these three things taking shape as long as this continues to be the case as long as the nasdaq is trading below this number we might be staring at a major major top 
reminiscent of uh, the highs of 19, I would say, nice of 1929, NASDAQ highs of March 2000, the market highs of October 2007. That type of a high, in, in fact, could be a high that we might not see for the next couple of years. So as long as these three things are taking place, as long as we can see evidence that this is what the market has done on hindsight, when we look back and if this continues to be confirmed by the market, we are expecting a major, major top, expect markets to go lower in the coming weeks and in the coming months. And trying to play the market from a bullish perspective, you'd have to wait for three years. I'll stop right here. I might continue the series, we'll see. But so far, our prediction, our analysis to go short over the last couple of days as of late last week seems to be paying fruit even as of right now. So let me end the video with a snapshot of the close. And maybe we take a look at where the essence now. Let's go back. NASDAQ now trading with the RSI on the daily around 60. Dow, RSI now at 45. And let's take a look at S&P 500, closed just a tad above 50 at 52. So if the market is going to see another down day, it might be because S&P 500 is cracking below 50. If the market is going to experience a huge up day, it's going to be because the Dow would be moving back above RSI 50. All right, that's it for now. See whether we're going to record more, more as we continue along with this educational series. All right, see you in the next one. All right, we are about to open for March 15th, 2018. We have about... It's called about three minutes to go before they open. Just want to take a look at the closing RSI numbers. All right, so Dow called up to open about 80 points. And just so that we can have the numbers here, Dow closed with the RSI at 45 point. For two. Take a look at the S&P 500, which was closest to 50, which closed at 52.46, give or take. And we can see the NASDAQ at 60.06. By the way, one thing I want to stress here is You'll notice yesterday, the NASDAQ was down 0 0.19%. It has the highest RSI on the daily, which means it's going to hold on to gains more. The higher the RSI, the more stock tends to hold on to gains, if not add on to gains. We can see evidence of this. Yesterday, the market was down as far as the Dow, S&P 500, and, and the NASDAQ. But notice the NASDAQ was only down 0.19%. S&P 500, which is above 50 also, was down 0.57%. You'll notice that the Dow was down the most, down exactly 1% because it is the one with the lowest RSI on the daily. So the lower the RSI, it is also an implication of how much you are holding on to gains or losing gains. The higher the RSI, as we can see here, Dow was down the most yesterday because it has the lowest RSI on the daily. So something to keep in mind. Remember, the RSI is pretty much an average gain or loss. And it, it is also showing that over the last 14 days, what the average gain and loss is.
So the lower the RSI, it means that you've been losing gains, you're not as strong. The higher the RSI, it means you've been gaining value, gaining points, and that's why you have a high RSI. So good example there, we see the higher the RSI, the more you can hold on to gains, the more you can add on to your gains. So we are about to open here. Let's watch this open. There. All right. So what I'm going to do here, we know what the opening numbers are for the day. I'll just uh, record maybe a minute of this open and then I'll be back at the close. So that's your open. And again, this is for trading for March 15th. 2018 we are coming into this day short we've been short since about late last week today being a Thursday so also options expiration week we expect volatility we'll see how things go I'll be back towards the close of the session all right and if you want a one close look at the how the markets are shaping up let's do that Take a look at the dailies, update the NASDAQ daily. NASDAQ is moving higher slightly for the day. Let's take a look at SPX, up slightly for the day at 53 in DU, also at 47. So if we get any movement, any big move, if we get a big move to the upside, it is going to be because the Dow is going to move above RSI 50. If we end up getting a big down day, it is because S&P 500 is going to be moving below 50. So that's a, that's the stage for now. Now, take a look at the hourly here. You can see that this is holding support on the hourly. So if the market is to move higher, it would be because it is holding this line. If the market is to go lower for the day, you'd want to wait for a break before you can add on to your short ideas. So support is good, means the market is going to be moving higher and probably even potentially move the Dow back above 50 for a big update, maybe 1% plus. But if we end up breaking this trend line on the hourly, we can expect there to be movement to the downside. In fact, we can see this on the 30 minute chart for the S&P 500. There's a line connecting RSI lows. And as long as this line is holding, the market has an opportunity here of moving higher. And at the same time, should we break below this line, then that would be suggesting that we are going to see a drop and potentially a good size drop because the S&P 500 closed just a tad above RSI 50 on the daily. So it looks like the setup here is if you wanted to play this market right now for intraday swing trade, you can be bullish intraday because this line is holding. And also you want to get out of that bullish intraday swing trade because if it breaks below this on a day on a daily chart I mean on this 30 minute chart a break of this line would be suggestive of a market that wants to go lower and you want to get out of your intraday bullish idea and again the reason why you'd be bullish intraday is because of this hourly chart of this 30 minute chart all right let me update that before I conclude and we continue holding that line so until we break this we can expect the market to be stable to bullish intraday I'll stop right there, and of course, if we break that line, we know the market can go lower. Otherwise, we'll see how things go. I'll be back at the close. Okay, here we go again. We are approaching the close of the session, and again, this is for March 15, 2018. Pretty much looks like a mixed day. The Dow is up the most, or has moved the most, up about point uh point five one percent what looks like a pretty much let's call it a mixed day nasdaq and s p 500 of course 
as you can see not much movement now it looks like the hourly charts have been holding the market together at the highs of the day i think the market was the dow was up about 230 points at the highs of the session let's take a look at those charts and we can see the dow had an opportunity of moving above 50 did not so we'll see whether that is going to play into the next potential swing trade the dow is also doing its best to form a straight line on the daily we can draw that line and we can also draw a crude wedge here so it looks like the market is trying to determine the next meaningful direction and we are closing just under 48 or about 48 on the daily rsi for the nasdaq i'm sure you can see that and we can also see that the s p 500 is holding just above the rsi 50 level the dow excuse me the nasdaq continues to hold in the 60s or higher 50s on the daily if we take a look at the hourly we can see that the line i had drawn in the morning lines continues to hold the market we know that from this setup we are going to either get a reason for the market to move higher or a break of this line there's the close a break of the blue line might move things lower take a look at the s p 500 hourly and again we have the similar type conclusion here as long as this is holding one can anticipate a recovery of the market for higher prices unless we break below that line and we see a, a move lower of some size and of course the dow hourly now we had looked at the 30 minute chart it continues to be the same the dow hourly also showing rsi support and of course we know that should the dow reclaim the rsi 50 level then that could be the beginning of a recovery move now the best way to summarize this and yes i can take a look at the 30 minute chart is on the 30 minute chart for the dow should encompass the other moving averages we held this line at the open looks like double bottom support so more and more anybody who's long now has a reason remember i'm saying anybody who's long so long as you are long in the short term for a swing trade a couple of hours maybe a day or two the reason why i say that is even though the hourly and the 30 minute chart are showing support let's not forget that on the weekly especially as viewed from the nasdaq the nasdaq is confirming the three things we had talked about as of right now of course we don't know what the next couple of sessions will bring but as of right now and that's all we can go go with the nasdaq is back below this number so remember number one was the we had a negative divergence on the nasdaq and we said this was a big deal a bearish signal as of right now it continues to be negative divergence unless the market can change that outlook or this look number two we talked about the 69.1 rejection And of course we've been rejected here and then number three was the failed weekly breakout so since all of these things have been confirmed as of right now it could change for example if the market if the nasdaq was to close higher and end at the highs of the week if it was to end here then it would be back above 69.1 and it would change all the outlook so right now right now this moment being a thursday we are looking at a market that is confirming all these three things so net net we can start seeing and leaning to a market that should be down in the coming weeks in the coming months and maybe maybe 
these are major highs. And I already talked about this in the previous last couple of videos in this very series. So any buy signal that you can see on the short time frame is only for short moves. If the market is bearish on the weekly, bearish and potentially going to affect the monthly, if the market is bearish on the weekly, the weekly time frames are more controlling than the smaller time frames. Always the bigger time frame has more power than the smaller time frame. So you can get a slight move higher within the context of a bigger potential move lower. So right now we are looking at a market that short term is finding stability, points to a move higher. And at the same time, we know that the same line can be violated aggressively for a big move lower. Now, based on this series, we've been talking about RSI 50 cross. We've been spending more time looking at the daily. We can see that the Dow closed at with its RSI at 42, 47, excuse me, 47.38, which is just close to 50. And yet SPX closed with its RSI just a tad above 50. So you have two instruments, major instruments, one just below 50, the other one just above 50. So whichever one moves, either SPX drops below 50 or the Dow moves above 50 will give us the next meaningful big daily move into the close. Now, because this is now open to either of these possibilities, the market is, is going to have to decide. And you can actually see this visually, visually, this confusion that the market is going to have to resolve by taking a look at this short term wedge on the Dow daily chart. So if we can blast above that to the upside, then the Dow gets a chance to move above 50 for a big up day, maybe even more. And maybe even the NASDAQ can correct some of its negative, some of its red flags. At the same time, should the market go on to break below this daily wedge for the Dow, then the S&P 500 is due for a drop, which would mean moving below 50, which would mean a big down day. Now keep in mind, as I have been stating, we have come into this week short and we remain short. And the NASDAQ is encouraging us to remain short because it has given us some of those big time frame negative divergence, 69.1 rejection, and moving back below its breakout level. So as long as the NASDAQ is below 7505.77, we can play this market always on the lookout for reasons to short, not reasons to buy. I'll stop right there and we shall continue on with this series. Remember, this is the close for March 15th, 2018. All right. See you in the next one. Should be tomorrow morning. I am out for now. Woo! Mwah! All right. Now it is next day. It is March 16th, 2018. We have about two and a half minutes to go before the close. So let's wait for the close and we shall, again, let's take a look here at the charts just before. So markets called to open pretty much, let's say, unchanged. Overnight, it hasn't moved much. If we take a look at the Dow, of course, we know the Dow closed with its daily RSI at about 47.38. NASDAQ, no, S&P 500 closed with its RSI at 52.07. So between the Dow and the SPX, one of them has a chance of moving above or below 50 for the next intraday sizable move. And of course, the NASDAQ trading 
in the higher 50s at 59. So basically we're going to have to wait and see how this plays out. And of course we looked at the hourly charts at the close yesterday. So the only thing I need to do here for now is give you a snapshot of the open and then we'll have another one potentially at the close. So this is how things are shaping up to open and we'll see how we open here in a, in a minute or so and then we shall record the close. All right, with a couple of seconds here before they open. There is the open, all right. Let's take a look here, go to live trading. These are futures trading. There is the market. See how we open here. More importantly, we know that our RSI on the NASDAQ and the Dow is close to 50. No, S&P 500 and the Dow. So that's where the next potential swing trade is. We come into this already short. So we are actually anticipating market movement to the downside. Whether we are right or not is pretty much for the market to decide for us. So again, I'm gonna record maybe the first couple minutes here of trading and then I'll come back at the close to see how those charts played out. And again, one more time, the key here is S&P 500, whether it is gonna hold above 50, start coiling up, or whether it is gonna drop below 50 for a sizable down day, or if the Dow is gonna reclaim the level above RSI 50, for a big update. So those are the considerations for now. And if you were to take a look at the Dow hourly, the line we were watching for support continues to offer support. So net net, this could actually turn into a positive day. RSI can move above 50 for the Dow on the hourly and start moving the daily above 50 for a big update. Subsequently, or in the alternative, a break of this hourly chart could set the stage for a movement lower. Back to the Dow daily, update this chart. We can see still trading at about 48, even at the highs of the day here, up about 50 points or so. So I'll stop recording for now and I'll be back at the close. As we approach the last two, three minutes of trading for Friday, March 16th, 2018, pretty much we are looking at a market that is slightly to the upside and market's been range bound the last couple of hours intraday, um, just about the, let's call it the Dow being up for most of the day around 100 points, 110 is where the market has been trading a little bit above that a little bit below that as we come to the conclusion of the week of the day we are still looking at daily charts that are pretty much the same from where we left them this morning and from yesterday keep in mind the dow had an opportunity here to move above 50 for a big up day as of right now it has not taken that opportunity to do so. Maybe this is telling us that the market is not in a mood to move higher because why else would you give up on an opportunity? Of course, at the end of the day, the Dow can still move above RSI 50 to continue its recent recovery of the lows of the week somewhere there. And I think the best description of what the market is doing and why we've come to a grinding halt, seemingly, is because we are coming to conclude this wedge as the best visual description. And of course, if the market can blast above that range, that would be bullish. If the market breaks below that range, that would be bearish. If we take a look at the S&P 500, 
we can see it continues to hug around the 50 RSI level. Remember, we can talk about other aspects of trading, but in this particular situation, we are looking at markets that have been trading around the RSI 50 for the Dow and S&P 500. Here we are just about to close for the week. There we go. I'll come back to the closing numbers for the week ending March 16th, 2018. What I can do while the numbers are settling out is let me update. Let me go back to the Dow. Update the daily chart for the Dow. See what the close looks like. Whoops. And the Dow seems to be still closing at about 48. And the precise number there is 48.32. Now, this is not the best signal for the Dow. Remember, the Dow should have taken back above RSI 54 big update. But as of right now, we've seen it's kind of not been able to do so. That might come into play. Take a look at the S&P 500. In other words, the Dow might be telling us that the market is set for a pullback. Uh, take a look at the S&P 500 at the close. And we can see S&P 500. We can also draw another wedge here. Looks like the market is going to have to decide which way it wants to go again. A breakout would be bullish. And of course, a break of the S&P 500 wedge on the RSI might be a signal of a market that wants to go down. S&P 500 closing at 54, 52.76. So it's interesting that they are both, if we take this to be our RSI 50, again SPX at 52 and change. Dow at 48 and change on the daily RSI. This is daily. Now, of course, you can see that why the market is confused. Because as we study this RSI crossing phenomena, you can see both the bears and the bulls have equal access to cracking the RSI 50 level. The bears right now would want the S&P 500 to drop below RSI 50 to begin a big down day and a move lower, while the bulls would like the Dow to recapture the RSI 50 level and above and stage a big up day to begin the recovery. So that's the fight, and which is also represented by this wedge that we see that is forming on the daily RSI for the major averages. This wedge, in fact, let me do it a little bit better. This daily RSI wedge, you can do it this way. Seems to be suggesting that the market is in a wedge, stuck in a wedge, and it's going to break out or break down. Let's conclude here by taking a look at the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ, you know, did close below 75. Which is the daily closing high and also happens to be the weekly breakout level. And as long as this is what we see here. As long as the, and I've talked about this, so I won't go into details again because you are very much aware of this. As long as the NASDAQ is holding above 7505.77, we remain in a market that is threatening to begin a major drop. As long as the NASDAQ is below this number, we have to assume that markets are dangerously setting up for a major move lower as long as the nasdaq is holding below 75 7505.77 take a look at the hourly here in conclusion 
and I'll use the Dow's hourly chart. No, the Nasdaq, since it's what is in front of me. And we can see that if this line can hold, the market has a chance of moving higher. If this line breaks, then we begin the slide. But all that is details because the key is the weekly chart breakout success or breakout failure as we discussed negative divergence and I said I don't want to talk about it but here I am talking about it negative divergence <laughs> I say I won't talk about it but it's fine sixty nine point one rejection was the second red flag and three we have the what was it that failed to break out failed break out seven five oh five point seven seven as long as these three major things are staring at us in the face we can lean for a market that is poised for lower prices, which has been the case that I've been talking about for more than a couple of weeks, if not from late last week. We came into this week short. Market's down for the week, so at least we're not. Market's not going against us. These are the closing numbers. I shall be back on Monday as I continue with this series. Ultimately, I want to make a prediction because this series would not make any sense if there was no prediction. I still predicting and that's why I lean short. I'm leaning short based on the Nasdaq's failure to break out. Now, if the Nasdaq can recapture the level above 75 or 5.77, then I would have to rethink my bearish thesis. So I'll stop right here. We shall continue this video in two days after the weekend which would be Monday morning which should be for March 19th 2018 all right see you in the next portion of this video which by the way I have to say something I've never done before which is record video of a series of days but it's something I'm enjoying to do and I'll, hopefully you're grasping something out of it all right. All right. I'll continue. The next portion should be Monday morning. Eric Mother, mother .com. This is now after the weekend and we are just about to open for trading for March 19th, 2018. Let's take a look at the close as of last week on Friday, the end S&P 500 closed with the RSI at 52.89. And then the Dow was the next one that was close to RSI 50. And it closed at 48.63. And the NASDAQ is ways off from the RSI 50 level, trading at about 59.04. Now, as you know, we came into this week, in fact, the last week, short, expecting the market to be in pullback mode. And, you know, of course, the market is going to determine the success or failure of that idea. Right now, let me show you what the pre-market open looks like. It's going to be around, let's call it down about 125 points on the Dow. And we'll see how we, we open for the day. And then we I will pause the video and come back at the close. Now, if this is true that the S&P 500 is dropping below, excuse me, that the S&P 500 is having a down day. Now the risk becomes whether or not the S&P 500 can hold above RSI 50. That is where a decision is going to have to be made. But if we crack below 50, I would estimate, we would estimate that the market is going to have a big down day into the close. Don't forget we are drawn some type of a wedge that could also be coming in play. 
if you do it like that. So, this is what things might shape up to be. We're going to have to wait. But clearly, if the market is beginning the day with a downdraft, the risk becomes for the S&P 500 to drop below 50. And we have a possible big down day. I would say more than the current pre-market drop of about 0.42. So if this is going to be truly a down day, I would say it's going to be down more than a percentage point. And pretty much into the close is where things are going to be trading. So let's wait to record the open here. And then I'll be back at the close as has been our pretty much, I guess, our routine in the process of this video, which has now spanned into the third week, I believe. At some point, I'm going to have to stop because the video is getting a little bit lengthy, getting close to about three hours. That's a long video. All right. So here's the open. And again, this is for March 19th. 2018 so this is a uh, futures trading let's go to live trading and I'm just gonna record the first couple of minutes here let's take a look at the S&P 500 let me update that chart and we can see at the open we are showing we are trading now at about 50 50.55 so the risk is that we drop below 50 for the day at some point and we stage at least a 1% down day or more, something in that range. All right, so this is, and again here, another up market is getting very close to that RSI 50 level. Let's take a look at what the numbers the market is printing look like. So it looks like still down about 100 plus on the Dow. Let's do the last update here. Still holding about 50. So I'll come back at the close. Whether we're going to have a down session or not, and especially whether we're going to have a huge drop for the day, is going to depend on whether or not the S&P 500 is going to drop below RSI 50 on the daily since that is what is closest to either moving above or below RSI 50. All right, I'll be back at the close right now with about two minutes of trading. Very early on, being a Monday, we'll see how the week is going to go. But for now, let me update this one more time. S&P 500, after a few minutes of trading, trading with its daily RSI at 50.28. The rest of the day is going to be determined by whether or not we drop below RSI 50. All right, I'll be back at the close. All right, we are coming towards the end of the session for, which is for March 19, 2018. And we are seeing the S&P 500. Since the morning, we see that it has drifted lower now moving below the threshold that we've been studying throughout all this period almost three hours of this video we've been studying this rsi 50 cross and we can see that the market is responding moving the s p 500 down about 1.5 percent so luckily we came into the week and into the previous week in fact from the highs here we've been short basically based on the things we've been talking about in this series and because of that observation the market is responding to it there's no way to have known for sure that the market would do this remember you never really want to show any type of arrogance because the market ultimately decides and the market can change its, its mind just as we can change our mind in our day-to-day -day activities in any rate we take a look at the NASDAQ, which depending on where it closes for the day, is moving down below 50. And the NASDAQ is showing the biggest drop. And that makes sense because it was farthest away from RSI 50. So you can see that the two 
of the major three indices, the Nasdaq was trading at about 59 as of the previous daily closing high, which was last Friday, today being a Monday. And because it was at 59, it needed a big move, relatively speaking, to the other indices if it was going to go below 50. And remember, when we trade below 50, generally we tend to close towards the lows of the day. So the market should close around here or lower. Somewhere around here because we are close to the lows of the day. I think at the lows of the day, the Dow is down 430 points, give or take. Now, again, just to hammer the point home, the NASDAQ started the trading session with the RSI at 59. So for it to move back below 50, you need a big number. And this big number is being supplied by this 1.8, 1 1.9% drop. And of course, S&P 500 started the day with its RSI at 52. So it needed less of a number to bring it lower. But remember, if you are going to move from above 50 to below 50, you need the introduction of a big number. So the big number being introduced is right there. And that's why you can take advantage of the RSI 50 cross if you can see other things lining up. Of course, the Dow was trading below 50. So we can see the Dow is not down as much as the NASDAQ, but pretty much reflective of the general environment today. And we also seem to be breaking below this wedge that we had started observing towards the end of last week. Now, one thing we had been talking about throughout this series is unlike the Dow, for example, here we see the Dow on the weekly was not breaking out over the last couple of weeks. S&P 500 was not breaking out over the last couple of weeks. The only major indice that was breaking out was the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ was showing a weekly breakout here. And the number there was and change. I believe it was 7.7. Seven. But we see right now, problem with the chart here is that the NASDAQ for now is showing a, a failed weekly breakout. Remember we talked about the negative divergence scenario, which is now being confirmed. We had an improvement here on a week-to-week -week basis. The market made a lower high. That's negative divergence. And then the third thing we're looking for was rejection at around the 69.1 level, which already took place. Now keep in mind, even as, as I type this, we see that if you take a look at the NASDAQ from a three-year monthly chart, one thing we need to watch here, those of us who are trading this live, is this market coming back to test. Or let me put it this way. Right now it looks like the breakout at 7.4, 11.48 on the NASDAQ seems to be stalling on the monthly. And this is a big deal. It suggests that we should not be surprised that this market is going to have to pull back significantly in the coming weeks and months based on the fact that it is now back below 7411.48. Now, of course, there's nothing stopping the market from attempting another breakout in the coming weeks, for example, should the NASDAQ decide to break out again above this number, then the NASDAQ has repaired the current damage. So it depends on how the market is going to respond. But let, let me record here the last couple of seconds of trading for the day. Market is a little bit off the lows, but still closing for a big down day. Net, net. We did not recover and turn positive or give back half the gains. Market is closing at the lower range of its lows for the day. All right. So everything that we've been expecting in terms of potential break did take place. Uh, we did not 
I guess, panic when the market was showing signs of the Dow moving above 50. We held on to our observations that the market was still looking a little bit on the negative. The Nasdaq spent most of last week showing negative divergence, 69.1 rejection. So all told, I believe I'm going to end the series right here. We have almost three hours of recording. And I think if I stretch it beyond this, it's going to pretty much not going to be of great service to you. So what we've seen in this series pretty much to sum up is the idea of understanding what happens to charts when they move above 50 or below 50. And one thing I should also add here is that right now we are getting close to this 50 level on all the major averages. I'm not saying the market is going to take that opportunity to break below 50, but if the weekly breaks below 50, we expect a big down week. Just like the last time we dropped below 50, even though we held, this is the week when we dropped below 50. You can see that was for a big move lower. So right now, depending on whether or not the market is in the mood, to drop below RSI 50 and of course if you're short then you'd want the market to drop below 50 because a drop below 50 on the weekly time frame suggests to expect a big down week into the close of that week. Of course we'll see how this goes and this is true if we take a look at the Dow also. The Dow weekly is inching closer and closer to that RSI 50. So. Those who are bullish would like the market to hold above the RSI 50 level. Otherwise, we shall see how things go. By the way, while we look at the markets here, we can see that the Dow opened the session with a gap down. And this gap down is consistent with the Dow moving below RSI 50. And the open did see a big candle lower. So even on the small time frame, we see that RSI 50 cross was respected by the market. And just a quick note here, even though by the time you watch it, it's, watch this video, it's going to be many months after the fact, more than likely. You can see that right now on the hourly, this is where we held coming off. The, this was the ideal entry on hindsight. Market held here with support. And now it looks like we are holding here. So the bulls look to be holding firm. And now, maybe I should also look into that before I close. You got this line here. RSI lows wants to hold. So as long as we are bouncing on this line, the opportunity for a reversal is there. And a drop of this line or a drop or a break below this line might ignite further selling. Now, one thing I should take a look at is the daily chart at the conclusion, especially for the NASDAQ. Reason being that the NASDAQ, oh, that's the Dow. Let's go to the SPX. SPX close at 45. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ on the daily again. NASDAQ daily closed at 49.74. <laughs> it doesn't get cl as close to, so it closed at 49.74, which is tricky because if the hourly charts continue supporting the market, then there is a chance for a snapback reversal if the Dow, excuse me, if the NASDAQ can move above RSI 50 on the daily now that it closed just a hair below RSI 50. So those are the things we are going to have to deal with. Uh, we'll see how things go. But keep in mind, as long as the NASDAQ is struggling on the weekly and on the monthly breakouts, we can continue expecting a lower market, even though day-to-day -day might not necessarily be lower. But as long as the NASDAQ is struggling to hold above the, the weekly buy point, as long as the NASDAQ is struggling to hold above the monthly buy points, we can assume that ultimately, even with moves higher in the short term, Eventually, the market rolls over. Otherwise, for this market to move higher, the NASDAQ has to reclaim the level back above its monthly breakout level and also back above its recent RSI breakout level. So I'll stop right here.
just because the video is lengthy as it is. I hope you've got some insight now as to how you can use the RSI 50 crossing. Oh, and before I close here, let's take a look at a testimonial from one of my Moadi.com subscribers highlighting the fact that we were, we've been looking at the negative divergence and based on the recent discussions we've had in this video series, he's been able to see a good return as of taking advantage of potential market pullback. So we've been lucky that the market has taken our direction. Of course, the challenge is always what to do next or the challenge, I should say, is always try and figuring out where the next meaningful swing trade is going to be. And the more you can get that as many times, and of course, you're not always going to get it right, but you want to get it as, as uh, frequently as possible. And the idea here was that even though I was only using one aspect of technical analysis, which is the RSI 50 cross, we can see that we've also looked at other parameters that helped us continue expecting the market to point, potentially move lower and potentially cross by moving below 50 and giving us a big update. So if somebody took profits, even based on today's action, I mean, I think it's too early. Of course, I don't know that for a fact, but I think if the monthly charts and weekly charts for the NASDAQ continue struggling, we might be looking at major, major, major highs. And if that is true, if that is true, of course, I don't know, you don't know. Um, at the time what market might do next but if the market is truly making a major high then the short ideas we've been uh, targeting are really gonna respond best if you if one holds them for a period of many months six to nine months would be ideal because that's when if the market is truly truly gonna drop that's when you can see the biggest drop in terms of returns Otherwise, let me end right there. Eric Mothers, mother .com. It's been a pleasure. And we conclude this series by taking a look at the close here, which is the close for March 19th, 2018. It's my pleasure to have taken you throughout this journey. As always, peace and blessings. I am out. Mwah.